astronomers always talk about their favourite objects and how wonderful everything looks in the night sky, but nobody ever talks about their worst objects and what they think looks a bit pants, really. So M29 would be there for me, which is a bit unkind, but it isn't that impressive as a cluster. That would be a good name, though, the Pants Cluster. The pants Cluster, yeah, I'd go with that. It sits to the southeast of the star at the centre of the Northern Cross and it's quite tricky to locate because that's where the Milky Way flows through Cygnus and so there are lots and lots of stars there. This isn't a particularly rich cluster and it's fairly faintish. It's magnitude 7.1 if I remember correctly, which means you've got to use pair of binoculars to find it. Because it hasn't got many members and because it's fairly faint and because there are lots and lots of other stars there, it's easy to get lost. So you can see where I'm going from on the slightly rubbish front. When you look at it, what you see, first of all, are four stars that make up a box in the sky. And then there are a couple of others which are underneath like so. So it makes this sort of this curved bottom going up to the top like so. And that has led to some people nicknaming it the cooling tower cluster. So it looks like a cooling tower from a power station. I'm assuming Messier didn't give it that name then. I don't think he was the originator of cooling tower. <laughs> but somebody did point out to me once that you've got these beautiful objects in the night sky. Isn't it a shame that we give them names which relate to things which are seen as a bit of an eyesore on I, the landscape? I think power station cooling towers are really beautiful. They're very, very impressive, I have to say. So. Um, I can't say the same about M29 though. The reason why it looks a bit rubbish is because it's believed that there is intervening material between us and the cluster. If you take a photograph of that region of the sky with an H-alpha sensitive piece of kit, you'll come up with lots and lots of reddish clouds permeating the regions. There's lots of galactic gas there, hydrogen gas. But there's also dust as well, which is permeated throughout the entire galaxy. You've seen pictures of some of the other Messier galaxies, like M104 comes to mind, the Sombrero galaxy, which has got a very dark dust lane that runs across it. And it's that material. And basically, that material has two effects. It attenuates the light that's coming to us from the cluster, so it actually blocks some of it and makes the thing look dimmer, and it also reddens that light as well. If you could take that material away, the cluster would be about three magnitudes brighter. So it'd be about magnitude four. So you'd see that with the naked eye. So it's a bit unfair that it looks as poor as it does. I think studies have shown that the clump is sort of variable in thickness as well. So it's, it could be just moving in between us and the cluster. So maybe one day M29 will get its day and it will shine beautifully for us. And also, there you go, and you called me pants. <laughs>